Nine months ago, seven player managers set out for Backyard Baseball League glory. Now it's down to two teams, the humongous Bombers and the Oakland Athletics. Game three of the Backyard Baseball World Series League Championship is coming at you. Extended highlights and press conference with the winning player manager. Also, a shout out to my only subscriber, Retro Sports Gamer. You're awesome. Okay, top of the first inning. Kenny Kawaguchi to the Fishes. Zena Frome popping one up to Billy Bean out in center field. The A's looking for their first double play, which would give them the power up. But Billy Bean gets beaned, drops to the ground, and it's not to be. Bottom of the athletics, first inning. Sammy Sosa has got runners on second and third with a chance to drive in a run. He pops this one up to center field. It will get the job done. Caught for the out, but Luan Louis able to tag and score for the Athletics' first run of this World Series game. Trying to keep the momentum going, Jason Kendall with runner on third. Swings at a big hook. Back to the pitcher. That'll end the scoring effort for the A's in the first inning. The Bombers' first inning, Sally Dobbs looking to do some serious damage with the man on second. Drives this ball to deep left, obviously foul, but you can't even see Barry Bonds when he makes this catch, ending the first inning threat for the Bombers. Nothing of note taking place in the second inning. We go to the third inning for the Bombers. Reese Worthington looking to drive Chipper Jones in off of second base. The 1-2 count looks at strike three again. That's the Bombers coming up empty with runners in scoring position. Third inning for the Athletics. Jason Kendall with men on second and third. Come Puts on. one through to the second baseman. Knocks him down. Scores Luan the Wee and extends their lead over the Bombers. Two to nothing. Burn it. Burn. The slow ball Get into down. the right center no. field gap. No. And it finds a little bit of yes. turf right in front of the center fielder's feet before it scoots past. It scores Kendall. Crockett safe on third. The Bombers escaped with uh, four total runs in the first three innings. Bombers still yet to show up, skip them again, and head to the Bombers' fourth inning where they're playing defense. Sammy Sosa showing off the cannon here. Beating yes. Kimmy Ekman back Let's to go. the bag, doubling her up, setting them up for some major offense in the fourth. Jose Canseco, an undergrounder with nobody on finds second base via the ground rule double billy bean regular on top of the ground grounder first base first and second one out and then here's sammy sosa playing oakland athletics baseball you've got your power hitter at the plate but still hitting a grounder to the right side forcing that worn out infield to make plays loading the bases for jason yes. kendall he draws a walk That'll bring the A's fifth run to the plate. And Lisa Crockett gets the chance to let her score do the talking. Undergrounder, you guess where it's coming up. Left center field, Kimmy Ekman's worst nightmare. Not even going to try. Sammy Sosa will score. Jason Kendall will eat a little dirt, and then he'll round third and score. Lisa Crockett with a standing double. Giant play for the A's in the fourth inning. They've got eight runs, but the carnage continues. They load the bases again in the same inning from Marty Cordova, another undergrounder. That double play proving crucial as it draws in Alicia Crockett and Jeremy Burnett. The ground will double will force Kawaguchi to third, men on second and third for this continuing fourth inning. Jose Canseco continuing the trend. He's got men on second and third and will hit a ground ball to the right side. Ground ball after ground ball after ground ball scores Kawaguchi. Cordova safe at third. And it's really just a matter of how far the A's can take this momentum in the fourth inning before the scoring runs out. Billy Bean's got a ground ball to the third base side as Canseco's running on the hit and run. Cordova scores 12 0 A's. Sammy Sosa relenting from the ground ball. Line drives to the left side, but the Fishes have him played perfectly in the shift, finally ending that fourth inning. To the Bombers' fourth, Pablo Sanchez couldn't freeze him. He's got ice in his veins. Right center field. That ball's going to get down. Pablo Sanchez will skip first base, say adios to second base, and land at third base. Que frio. Bombers now have a power up to work with. Larry Walker refusing to access that power with runners on second and third instead hits a spitball all of six feet 
but lands safely on first. And now the Bombers really poised for something big. Two offensive power-ups with the bases loaded here in the fourth inning. The Hall of Famer Mike Piazza at the plate with the bases loaded, screaming line drive on tap, and driven into right center field. Bombers finally on the board. Sanchez scores, Dobbs scores, Larry Walker finds third base, men on the corners, and we are starting to have a ball game. Mo Vaughn continuing the trend after Piazza takes second. No outs in this inning. Line drive, right field, Walker will score. Will Piazza score or die trying? Place your bets right now. Mo Vaughn, greedy, taking second base. Piazza draws the throw. Check your draft boards. Mike Piazza is the slowest player in the game. Literally a two. Bringing the first out of the inning for the Bombers. Ernie Steele still has a screaming line drive. On a spitball, right field. What great luck. Because that will count for a power up as well. Mo Vaughn scores. Ernie Steele on first. It is a 12-4 ball game with yet another power up for the Bombers. However, that's all the offense they would get in the fourth inning, so we go to the fifth inning for the Athletics. And here's a ground is. ball to the left side. Kendall coming on to glove it. Kenny Kawaguchi beats him there, throws the Lisa Crockett for the force out. Sammy Sosa's got the runner in a rundown between third and second. Tags are yes. out for the double play, which means we're headed for some aluminum power action. Kenny Kawaguchi does the honors. Right field. And the A's now just trying to get as many runs as they can out of their last inning of offense. Remember, they are the home team just as the Bombers are. So five innings of offense is all they're going to get. Marty Cordova blasting this wall. Cordova, the right field wall. 15 to 4. Canseco's had a great game so far. Can he add to that lead before the A's have to close the book on their own offense? Here's a ground ball to the right side. Luan Lui looking for third base. Second baseman's throw to first base is in time for the out, which means the Bombers are down to their last three outs. Make it two outs with Pablo Sanchez trying to earn one last power up. Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. Beat that throw. Pablo Sanchez safe on first base, bringing Larry Walker up to the plate with an underground, a runner going. Here's a swing and a successful under to thunder. Pablo Sanchez scores on a ground rule double. 15-5. Elevator pitch. Mike Piazza swings and another undergrounder, which will earn them yet another power up. Bombers may be able to make a little bit more of this fifth inning with only one out to go. Larry Walker scores. That's 15-6. Mike Piazza safe at second. But even with power ups, Mike Piazza is a tough run to bring home. Mo Vaughn. Yet another undergrounder with two outs. Swing and another successful connection. This is the third mole of the inning, and it's enough to drive in their seventh run. It's down to Ernie Steele with two strikes, a hook. He swings, he misses, it's strike three. That's as much as they would score. Sammy Sosa with the final strikeout. The A's run away with the World Series by a score of 15 to seven. I can't believe it. The Oakland Athletics have finally vindicated Billy Bean's rebellion against American baseball tradition. And now for a press conference with the winning player manager, Paul McMichael. Woo. We did it. Obviously proud of these kids, thankful for each of their contributions to today's win, uh, thankful for the parents, everything that they've done for us this season. Uh, thank you to the BBPMA, all of the different commissioners who have made this season a success. Special thanks to Jordan Helwig and all the work that he's done in uh, video and media this season. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank uh, the Bombers organization, the uh, great series that we had here, uh, one that is certainly going to be uh, remembered by, by, uh, by me for a long time. Today is a dream come true. I remember growing up playing backyard baseball. Whenever I won the World Series, I would come down and tell my parents that I had just won the World Series. And here we are today, uh, get to celebrate a World Series victory, playing a game with my friends. It's uh, a dream come true. So uh, thank you to all. It's a great day for the athletics organization. Thank you to the, uh, to the owner. 
the general manager, manager, uh, for all of the work that they put in this season to come out on top. So I'll uh, be taking a few questions. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know much has been made about the rivalry between the Athletics and the Bombers. Uh, of course, it was a rivalry last season as well, one that never really got resolved. So uh, I was really happy to be matched up with the Bombers in the World Series this year. You know, the Bombers played an incredible postseason. They were great all season long. They were absolutely deserving one seed. And uh, they had great playoffs. They scored 40 runs in two games of the championship series. Uh, scored 12 and 28 in the first two games of this series. And, you know, a few things go differently today. And Derek is sitting at this podium as the champion. So, you know, all credit to them. Uh, I did see Derek after the game. And uh, he was happy for me. Obviously disappointed that uh, he couldn't come out on top this year. But... I'm sure that he'll be back because he's a great manager, uh, a great owner, plays the game the right way, knows what he's doing, and uh, you know I, I look forward to to meeting him again in the future. Yeah. Yeah, you know that's indicative of uh, of what's happened all season. You know, there's some games where you just get off to a slow start. And uh, my job as a manager is to keep communicating to the kids that we've got to make the most out of every single at bat. You know, when we had only scored those four runs through three innings, of course we were nervous. But, uh, you know, I just keep communicating to them that we have to fight every at bat. Uh, we have to make every single one count. Of course, getting that double play in the fourth inning was huge for us. Uh, getting that double play in the fifth inning that sets up the aluminum power ends up helping us score three runs in the fifth. And, uh, you know, when we can get runners on base, we can produce runs. And we really started turning them over there in the fourth inning. Uh, of course, the Lisa undergrounder makes a huge difference. Uh, Jose had a single in there to score one. So, you know, we just kept fighting uh, there in the fourth and, and were able to get that one big inning. And, that's uh, something that we've been able to do all season long. You, you keep after it, and eventually the big inning comes for us. Yeah, it's really hard to pick out one player, um, but today the MVP is going to go to Jose Canseco. Uh, through the World Series, Jose was 13 for 16. He had seven RBIs and scored nine runs. Uh, Jose was someone who we could consistently count on to uh, hit for contact, someone we could consistently count on to put the ball in play and, and uh, run hard to first base. So uh, the uh, MVP, postseason MVP award, is going to go to Jose Canseco. Last one. Yeah, you know, all of those uh, preseason trades and acquisitions end up contributing to who this team is. You know, I'm happy for the front office. We offered trades to every single team in the league. Um, we were able to, to actually make moves with three different teams. And, you know, Jose Canseco is the MVP. We acquired him not from another team, but we acquired the draft pick to get Jose where we got him. And, uh, of course, we think that he's going to go higher next year after the way that he's played here. You know, we swapped for Burnitz. Burnitz had a great World Series as well. So, you know, we, we uh, worked hard to scout. We worked hard to kind of make some trades to put our team in a position to win. And, uh, and that's what we were able to do here today. Again, uh, thank you to all. It was a great season. I had a ton of fun. Uh, and, um, you know, really happy to see us come out on top this year. Um, best of luck to uh, all the competitors next season. It's going to be a, a good off season. It's never too early to begin scouting and preparing for draft for 2019. Uh, thank you. And uh, there it is, champions. <laughs>